Hi everyone, welcome to another Tech Nerd tutorial. Today we're going to install Ubuntu 16.04 long term support. Ubuntu Desktop is like an operating system like Windows or Mac OS X. It has a file explorer, you can access your files. You have Mozilla Firefox installed by default where you can then access the internet and be able to go onto Google, go onto Outlook, um, and you can even install Google Chrome in here as well. Uh, and then it also has uh, an Office Suite, uh, similar to that of Microsoft Office built in as well. So here I'm just closing Firefox. And in the taskbar on the left, I'm currently clicking on LibreOffice Writer, which is equivalent to Microsoft Office Word. As this loads, you see that it is a text editor, uh, which allows me to uh, create document files. I am also able to, when I save, I can also choose instead of saving as this default file, uh, I can save it as a .docx, so that's compatible with other Microsoft Office products if I do need to have access to that as well. So this is the writer, and just to quickly click through the other ones, they do have part of LibreOffice, a spreadsheet, as well as a presentation editor as well. So. Uh, an office suite already built in to the operating system so that you can make those uh, edits without having to pay for an office suite. Also have Ubuntu software. This is very similar to an app store where when it loads, it will give you the options of uh, different apps. These include programs that would be traditionally installed in Windows or Mac OS X. So Mac OS X does have the app store, but one complaint is that in Windows, it's hard to find specific files, specific programs on the internet. There isn't a place to consolidate that like there is here in Ubuntu. I've clicked on the games genre so that we can see what games are available, we can see which ones are installed, and I can click on a particular game and then install that as necessary. So there's a lot of desktop advantages to using Ubuntu. Uh, here we have the Ubuntu button where I can go and search for an application or I can go and just look at the application so there's installed sections where I can find them and be able to view all my applications as necessary. So there's a lot of desktop features. There is also a lot of diversity in this particular operating system. I can uh, be able to also do server and server-like activities with this particular desktop, which is why we are going to install it. In addition, it does also bring new life to uh, an old laptop or computer because it doesn't need as much requirements. I'm just here going to also click on the system settings so you can see that it also has a control panel like system as well. So with that all said, we're going to go into the steps of installing the Ubuntu desktop. We start with having to create the installation media, and through that we have to either use Windows or Mac OS X on another computer to first download the file to then burn onto a DVD or be able to boot from USB. So this step is the only step where you do need another computer of some sort, one with a DVD drive or a USB port, and then just go in and log into an internet browser. Here we're going to use Internet Explorer place that we want to navigate to is going to be ubuntu.com. Type that in the address bar and that will take us to our location that you see on the screen. So with ubuntu.com, then we want to click on desktop at the top and this will take us to the desktop operating system uh, information. Now if you are using an older laptop or you have more uh, technical experience, you can also try server version which is just towards the left this one it doesn't have a user interface uh, it is more useful for things like older computers that may not be able to handle the graphics and if you are using something that is on all the time you can then use a more low power uh, hardware so that it's not taking up a lot of energy to keep something on 24 7. so that's something to think about if you want to be more advanced or you've done everything with desktop can definitely go there. Now there was a download button which I'm just going to skip over to just go to the information where it says that it is a complete operating system to help you do uh, things like uh, homework and work 
in general, it is open source, so it is free to use, and it is secure in the fact that it does have built-in firewall and virus protection, but it also updates very frequently. There's versions for enterprise, for education, for government, and for developers if you are uh, fall under any of those classes. And here's the other important thing, is that it does install very well on many different types of hardware. Already mentioned that it does install well on older hardware as well, which is really the benefit of using Ubuntu. So with that, there's also some support and uh, some other information below, but we're just gonna scroll all the way back up to the top in order to get to the download button. So we can then go ahead and click download Ubuntu. That will take us to the download page in which it will also give the system requirements. And you'll notice that the system requirements are quite small. Two gigahertz dual core processor is something that has been around since the mid 2000s, right? And as long as it has a DVD drive or a USB port, then you can be able to install. Now, if you scroll down a little bit more, there is also the instructions on Windows and Mac OS X in order to burn a DVD as well as create a bootable USB stick. So in that sense, I'm not going to include those parts in this particular uh, tutorial just because the resources are there are quite in depth and uh, are easy to follow. We're just gonna go ahead and click the download button. And now this page is one that you wanna be watchful for, is that Ubuntu is uh, done uh, from a free community and it does have ability to uh, donate to them, but there is a link on the left that allows you to go to the download without doing a donation. So it's good to donate, but if you don't have the funds on hand, then you can just download it for free. So here in Internet Explorer, I do have to hit save and then I'll go ahead and let it download. So I'm gonna pause the video and then we're gonna come right back when the download is complete. Now that the download is done, we can go ahead and open that particular a file. So here I can go to open folder and in Windows, if I go ahead and click on the file, it will actually in the menu also say I can burn the disk image. So that can be quite useful in order to uh, be able to uh, just click on that. And as long as there's a DVD in the drive, it will be able to go through that burning process. Uh, there is also a lot of third party software that you can use to burn the disk image. Uh, as well as you can also go ahead and follow the instructions on the Ubuntu page in order to burn this disk image. Once the disk or USB is made, you will have to boot up your computer and have it boot towards the DVD or USB that you've created. Many computers will have on the very first screen with the company logo, it'll have like a key command like F12 or F10 to go to a boot menu where you can choose to boot from the DVD or the USB. If there isn't one visible, it can be hidden. So you may have to Google your particular computer's model in order to find that information. Now you are done with this process. So you can go ahead and shut down this computer, go to the computer that you wanna boot up with, load the disk in USB, and then boot it up. And then we'll go to uh, the page that will appear once you've booted up into the Ubuntu installation media. Now that we've booted up into the installation media, we're going to see that it is gonna first ask us to select a language. So I just selected English, it defaults to try Ubuntu before installing, but we're gonna go down on the keyboard, hit enter to install the media. So it is just gonna take a couple seconds to load. It will actually load into the Ubuntu operating system. So because it isn't fully installed, we have this rudimentary uh, logo for loading, which actually disappears once you have the operating system installed on the computer. So it's just gonna run through this a couple times. And like I said, it is going off a DVD or a USB. So it does take a little bit of time. The USB does work a little bit faster, but either or, it does take a little bit of time for it to boot up. So now that it is booted, we are going to automatically first have uh, the pop-up that gives us our install setup. Now, in order for this install setup to work as efficiently as it is right now, it does need to be connected to the internet. So it once again, wants me to confirm a language. I just go ahead and hit continue. And then it's gonna ask whether to download updates while installing Ubuntu. I wanna check that off so that it just, it makes it so that Ubuntu is all the way up to date. 
once again, I need the internet to be connected. The second one allows us to automatically install things like uh, MP3 or Flash codecs that are not necessarily open source. They are owned by proprietary companies, but are, are free to download and install. So we check both of those off and then we go ahead and hit continue. And it'll take us to the next part of the wizard. So the wizard will then uh, double check for the hardware requirements of the particular machine because of the fact that this one is being installed on a clean hard drive. So one that doesn't have an operating system on it, it will not give an option to put it side by side. It just gives me erase disk and install Ubuntu. But if I was installing this over a Windows, it would ask whether I want to automatically repartition so I can boot into Windows or Ubuntu. If you do that, it does make it a little bit more complex when accessing your files. But for the most part, it is an option if you don't want to give up on Windows. There is also the option to encrypt the hard drive so that someone can't just pull out the hard drive and be able to read it, as well as to use logical volumes. That's a little bit more complex. You don't really need to worry about it. So you don't have to check those off unless you want to. We are just going to stick with the default, which is erase the disk and install Ubuntu. If you are doing this on a fresh install, this is what you would end up clicking. And for the most part, if it's an old system that you haven't used for a year or two, probably do this and it's fine. It's going to then ask for me to confirm what's going to happen. So it's going to change the partition and it's going to create those two partitions. Go ahead and hit continue. And now it's actually going to start writing things to your hard drive after this particular step. Before that, nothing is going to change. And even right now, you still have to choose things before it will start writing to the hard drive. Here it successfully chose I'm in Edmonton in Canada. You can click around the map to get to a time zone. You just click near where your city is and it'll find it. It'll also auto detect your keyboard. Here it did detect English US. So if you did have a different keyboard, it will try to, to uh, identify it or you can manually select it in the menu. I'm just going to go ahead and hit uh, continue. Now it's going to ask for your name, which is going to be also your username. How you want to name your computer. So I'm just going to uh, name it uh, Mike uh, vserve, just, you know, a name to identify it. And then also your username and then a password. It will tell you to repeat the password. It gives you the option to log in automatically, but for security's sake, I suggest you just leave the default to require my password to log in. It also does tell you if your password is weak or not. For this case it is, but it is just a test environment, so we're not going to worry about that. Once that's all set up, we go ahead and hit continue. Then we let the entire process go ahead and copy files, download files, and install. So this particular process, uh, it is currently sped up on your screen and you are noticing it still will take a little bit of time. While it is going through, it does give you more of a background on what things are part of the Ubuntu operating system, what things you can do, some tips and tricks in order to be able to use the Ubuntu and get started with it. So for this particular section, I would suggest you go ahead and go grab a cup of coffee, uh, do something else, just wait until uh, the system is fully installed. Uh, and like I said, the cards that are on the screen, they'll eventually start to cycle again, and then there really isn't any new information to uh, read about. So apart from that, I'm just going to once again cut this particular part of the video and come back when uh, all the installing installation is finished uh, for my computer. This took approximately about 15 minutes. But once again, I've also had uh, installations on older computers that took a half an hour, 10 hours. So it really just depends on the hardware of your computer. So I'll see you back after the transition. So when the installation is complete, we will get this final dialog box just confirming its completion as well as telling us the need to restart the computer. I'm going to go ahead and click the restart now button. We'll initiate the restart process. Now because it is restarting from the installation media, so the DVD or the USB. It will actually ask for us to remove that DVD or USB and hit enter right here before it'll actually fully reboot. And that's just because some computers will default to booting to the DVD or USB drive. Here we just see my computer rebooting. Uh, we just get a couple lines of code and then it will fully reboot into the login screen. So here it's actually just mounting the hard drive. And then after that, we get to the login screen 
can now go ahead and just type in our password and they'll take us to the Ubuntu desktop. Since this is the very first time going to the Ubuntu desktop, it will also appear with keyboard shortcuts. You can go ahead and click the X at the top left corner of the keyboard shortcuts to remove it. It's just good to peruse and see what things are here. And then you're ready to start with your Ubuntu desktop. With that, this computer is now ready as is to either use or to be able to add new features to it in the future. Hi everyone, thanks again for watching this video. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And go ahead and leave a comment down below if you have any additional questions or comments. Furthermore, check out some of our related videos or find us in our social media. If you would like email notifications of whenever we release new video or written tutorials, you can go to our webpage technerdservices.com and sign up for our weekly newsletter we will send to your inbox notifications of those new video and tutorials. Thanks again for watching and until next time, keep teching on.